I am Polygroid and you are learning at Impolygroid channel. Enjoy and have a great time. Rose. Has my mother yet awakened? I did not overindulge. Truly, it was just a poor night of sleep. I shall fetch a glass. Of raw eggs and garlic, ma'am. Should be just the thing. Are you feeling better, dearest? Perhaps I, too, caught whatever it was. That sent you home early from the party. I have a terrible headache, indeed. What is it? I am engaged. Oh. Well, that is wonderful news. So, you will be a princess. No. No. No, I will not. Mama, I am engaged to the Duke. The Duke asked for my hand. And I accepted. You do not seem pleased. Whatever is wrong? Oh no. No. Nothing is wrong. It simply happened so quickly. I've not had a moment to take it in. But I am overjoyed, Mama, truly. Of course you are. You are to be a Duchess. Oh, darling. I knew there was something between you. Ruse or not? Well, tell me. Tell me everything. How do you feel? So in love. I'm unsure how I can be expected. To wait an entire month to marry. Could we not obtain a special license? To marry this week. I do not wish to lie to you. But the Duke and I. You do not need to tell me anything. Whatever happened. Between the two of you. It is all right. I know good society. Makes quite a fuss about such things. But when it comes to love. Such things happen. More frequently than one might expect. Even your father and I, we had trouble. Controlling our passions as well. Your drink, mom. Will not be necessary, Wilson. I am feeling much improved. We have a wedding to plan in three days. My darling girl. You are getting what you always wanted. You are marrying for love. One may say modesty is a virtue. Yet this author. Is hardly a virtuous woman. It is therefore my great pleasure. To announce the news others questioned. But I never doubted. It will be. The grandest wedding of the year. Tulips enough to fill the great room. And the finest silks. Only the best. For Miss Bridgerton and my nephew. The latest whistledown. How does she report my triumph? The diamond. Of the season has made her match. Officially betrothed. To the Duke of Hastings. Has something happened? The bride, undoubtedly. Is giddy with anticipation. Over the impending nuptials. I shall need fittings for the dress. And my trousseau. And, oh. I am forgetting something, surely. I shall take care of everything. Just think, you shall be the Duchess. By Saturday. An event that will apparently take place. Sooner rather than later. Of course, there are only two reasons. To procure a special license. And race to the altar. True love. Or concealing a scandal. How does it feel, sister, to be in love? Imagine leaping off a cliff. And shattering on the ground. A fair analogy. I am afraid I cannot find. The words, dear Hyacinth. Though, Eloise, I believe. You will know what love feels like. Soon enough next season. You think I am. To follow in your footsteps. Can there be a more dreadful fate? You do know that I am setting. The standard for your future matches, yes. You should be grateful. The only thing I am grateful for. Is that I am not you, nor will I ever be. Miss Daphne, His Royal Highness. 
Prince Friedrich is here for you. I am sorry. You have nothing to be sorry for. No, no promises were made. Although, I thought we shared an understanding with our discussions of the future. But, ah, the fault is mine for misreading. Your polite attentions as something more. No, you did not misread me. Then why? This engagement is of your own free will, is it not? If the Duke is forcing your hand, forcing me, my goodness. If anything, I am the one forcing him. What I mean to say is that love is surely the greatest force of all. Once the Duke and I realized we were completely enamored with each other, nothing could stand between us. Not even, I'm sorry to say, the attentions of a good and kind man such as yourself. Then I can only wish you a lifetime of contentment with your new husband. It was a pleasure to know you. Miss Bridgerton. Hyacinth. I could not help it, sister. Though, I must say, I certainly hope the Duke's proposal was at least half as romantic as that. Did we not say ten o'clock? We did. There he is. Well, do not make haste on our account. A most heartfelt congratulations. Your Grace. I look forward to counting you as part of our family. As do I. Did you bring the bar with you, boy? Perhaps we should promenade. Have you? I should. I was. I was going to ask if you had tried drinking raw eggs and garlic. I hear it works wonders to rid yourself of the lingering effects of. What were you going to say? What? Before, you started to say something. Oh, I. I do not recall. Simon, look at me. Well, if it isn't the most talked about couple in the ton. Such a perfect looking pair. Indeed. The two of you will make a fine family, I am sure of it. Thank you. We are so happy. Very much so. Hmm. I remember that feeling. The nerves of new love. Or something like it. Madame de la Croix, good day. May I? She is not here. I only beg a moment of her time. She does not owe me her time, I know that. She does not owe me anything. But I wish to provide for her regardless. As I promised, she will be taken care of. Will you tell her? You are too late. Sienna's gone. Gone? You mean, she's left town? Indeed. As it transpires, my lord. She does not need your money. Nor anything else from you. For that matter. Tell me where she is. Leave the young lady alone. Have you not done enough? It seems Mrs. Varley had some trouble at the Modishta this morning. Madame de la Croix is refusing to give her any of the dresses until the last few months' bills are paid. The young ladies have plenty of dresses. Perhaps it is possible for them to wear them all again. And perhaps it is possible for you to do without your tobacco as well. Mr. Colin Bridgerton for Miss Thompson. Oh, Mr. Bridgerton, these are beautiful. I applaud you, Miss Thompson. I bring you flowers on each of my visits. And yet you react. With admirable surprise every time. I shall need. To bring you something unexpected. A bushel of tomatoes, perhaps. Oh. Marina hates tomatoes. That is untrue. I love tomatoes. Colin, you know where I have heard. You can get excellent tomatoes. Greece. Perhaps you could. 
bring back a tomato plant for Miss Thompson as a souvenir. When you return from your travels this year, I am uncertain of my travels at the moment, Pen. But you were so keen to travel. It is true. But, were I to go, there may be things in London I should miss even more than seeing the world. Some tea, Mr. Bridgerton. That would be lovely. Mama, do you think this is wise? Whatever do you mean? Colin is young. Years from seriously thinking about marriage. I would hate to think. Marina is simply wasting her time. Time she simply does not have, of course. That is all. Your mistress will not know. The household staff. At the Duke's country home. So it will be your business. To attend to her needs. And ease her arrival. Her happiness is your greatest concern. Oh no. No, no, no. The icing must be as white as lilies. This is a proper family. A shipment of fine sugar went down at sea. There is no more in London. For love nor money. Does Miss Daphne wish? For roses or lilacs for the ceremony? Ah. Does your mistress wish the cake? To be soaked in rum or brandy? Will it be tongue? Or ham with eggs for the reception? I am not sure. I shall ask. Rose, you are the future Duchess's lady's maid. You must know these things. Your wedding gown is a long way from being finished. Miss Bridgerton, I promise you will not be disappointed. She will need a new pelisse too. And then the more intimate items. Four night dresses, perhaps. Or five. What could I possibly need? With five new night dresses. They are not for you, Ma Cher. But for your Amaru. What else do you think a honeymoon is for? It will be a most special time, dear. Yes, five. Five night dresses. Will do nicely. Daphne. How lovely to see you. Oh, I do hope. Your wedding dress will be ready in time. Madame de la Croix must be working so fast. Mama, might you spare me a moment? I must have Cressida's opinion. On some fabric. Her taste is impeccable. Of course, dear. I am to have a new pelisse. For my honeymoon. What about this color? Trimmed with fur, perhaps. Fur, at this time of year. Well. I suppose it depends on how much time you and the Duke spend outdoors. But you are fond of a midnight garden stroll, I believe. I do not know what you mean. I am almost certain I saw the two of you in the gardens at the Trowbridge Ball. No chaperone in sight. How strange. I do not recall leaving the ballroom. Hem. Though I dare say, it would have been difficult to see the gardens with any real clarity at night, unless you were actually out in them yourself. My view of the garden was perfectly clear. From the safety of the terrace, Daphne, you dallied with the prince, purely to rouse the duke's jealousy. And then you lured him into those gardens to trap him into marriage. I never would have imagined that a Bridgerton would ever come to know such shame. You should consider your words more carefully, Cressida. In a matter of days, I am to be a Duchess. And you shall be just as you are now, unmarried and untitled. So you can either be a Duchess's friend or her enemy. It is entirely up to you. First, let us see if you actually manage to drag him down that aisle at all. I would imagine a man like the Duke does not take kindly 
to being forced into anything. I bid you farewell, Tante. I shall be returning to Prussia this afternoon. Am I to believe you truly long for sweet pickles and sauerkraut? Fight for the girl. Hastings is merely a duke. You are a prince. I have no interest in brandishing my title before the young lady, nor do I need to. I am happy for them. Everyone is happy for them. You have read of what your dear Whistledown writes. What do you want? It is the king, your majesty. Dead. Lucid. Alphidasayan, if you must go. While you may be content to accept defeat. It is certainly not how I approach things. Apologies for my tardiness. Not at all. The archbishop is yet to arrive. We should discuss Daphne's dowry. There is nothing to discuss. I will not accept one. I beg your pardon. I need not be paid to marry Daphne. It is an insulting custom in my judgment. You may place the money in trust for her. But you need not harbor any doubts. Of my intention to support your sister. Her well-being is my responsibility now. I take that duty. With the utmost seriousness. I must apologize for. Ah. Uh, well. Shooting at me. Indeed. I would have thought you dishonorable. Had you not. Besides. You have always been a terrible shot. You'd have stood. A greater chance of wounding me. If you had simply fired. Straight up in the air. Your grace. May I express my gratitude. For your granting of this special license. Perhaps, my lord, you should not. Denied. What on earth for? The Archbishop of Canterbury. Did not think he owed me an explanation. If we are to wait weeks for this wedding. It gives Cressida Cooper. Not to mention Whistledown. And anyone else. Far too much time to uncover. The truth of what happened in that garden. Simon. Lady Danbury. Welcome, welcome. Is everyone as famished as I? Now, this is far too grim a mood. For the celebration I was counting on. What on earth is the matter? Anthony. We have been denied our request. For a special license. What? The Archbishop did not see a need. It is not the Archbishop. It is the Queen. Perhaps she has taken your rejection of her nephew to heart. Or perhaps she is simply bored. Either way, it does not bode well for your daughter's social future. Nor any of the Bridgertons. For that matter, surely we must be able to do something. Give her what she wants. Attention. Appear before her yourselves. And make a personal appeal. But she will not respond to begging. And she can sniff out even. The faintest whiff of insincerity. So do not lay it on thick. Tell her you are in love. Plain and simple and true. You can do that, can you not? Good. Now, where is the dinner I was promised? Bridgerton. I am so glad you came. I dare not miss it. Please, come in. Make yourself at home. I would show you around. But host duty calls. What are you doing here? Apologies. Have we met? We do not need to have met. You are a Bridgerton, yes. I see my reputation precedes me. Not exactly a virtue. Anything that gets me your attention is a good thing, I rather think. You should go home to your brother, perhaps. But I'm receiving far too warm a welcome here. Bridgerton. Is that how the tune goes? It's a bloody love song, I think. Happy to hear you're embracing the genre. 
Where is my drink? Did they kick you out? My god, they kicked you out. Will marrying the girl truly be so bad? I know you care for her. Feelings are irrelevant. Indeed, they're responsible for this mess. I let them get the better of me. Now she has to fight. For a wedding she doesn't even want. You think someone wrote a love song about that? Hey, tell him to play the one about the trapped wife. All right, friend. Time to get you out of here. I've invited Lord Rutledge to dine with us Saturday. You have until then to muster appropriate enthusiasm for his proposal. I could have until judgment day and still not manage a smile for that wretched fate. Despite all obstacles, I have managed to find a man who will overlook your current circumstance and offer you some security. You should be lavishing me with gratitude. And yet you merely sit here and sulk. Hmm. Is this about Mr. Bridgerton? He likes me. He'll propose to me, I am sure of it. That boy is barely out of leading strings. He has two older brothers. Still running from the yoke. You are. To cut Colin Bridgerton immediately. Or I will lock you in this room. Till the day. Lord Rutledge makes you his wife. Lady Featherington, wait. You are right. You have been kind to me. And I should like to repay you for that kindness. If I were to marry Mr. Bridgerton, you would be connected to what I gather is a very powerful family, indeed. Think what that could do for your girls. Give me until Saturday. If I have not secured a proposal from Mr. Bridgerton by then, I shall accept Lord Rutledge with a smile on my face. My girl, you are six months away from motherhood. Seven if you're lucky. And even if a miracle were to occur and Colin Bridgerton proposed tomorrow, the wedding wouldn't be for weeks. That is only assuming we wait until the wedding night to consummate the union. You will seduce him. I will do what I must. Very well. You have until Saturday. My king. No need for the formality, Lottie. Sit with me. How is little George? Well, he is not so little anymore. Grows plumper by the day, in fact. I am quite sure he does. Your subjects miss you, my dear. I miss you. I'm right here, Lottie. I was just remembering. The bluebells in the cottage garden. Ah. Do you recall when you first saw them? You said it was. As if we were walking in the clouds. You had just filled the paddock. With kangaroos, of all things. Yes. Dreadful creatures. How are the gardens coming along? Oh, they are in full bloom. After your meal, perhaps we could take a walk, like we used to do. And how is dear Emily? Can you bring her to me? George. Amelia was ill. Several years ago. She came to my room but a fortnight ago. Did you not see her? She is gone, George. What did you? Have you done something? What have you done? What has this woman done to my child? George. No, what have you done? What have you done? Your Majesty. No, you come back here. She has killed my child. You bitch, you bitch. Miss. Rose. Is everything all right? I cannot sleep. It is quite late. For you to be up, too, is it not? There is much to be done. If you're nervous about the wedding, you need not worry. I assure you, I am managing everything. I will be ready. I know you will. 
You are not who I worry about. The Duke. Has he asked to beg off, miss? No. But he may wish to. Every man entertains doubt. Before the day, I rather think. But it does not signify. He will be a good husband to you. A good father as well. Miss. He cannot have children. I shall not pretend to understand the extent of his physical impediment. But I imagine it is a source of great pain for the Duke, indeed. I have an aunt. She lives in Greenwich with her husband. They have been married for ten years now and never blessed with children. But they still are to each other as husband and wife. Theirs is a happy union. Because they love each other. At least your aunt has that. I shall not keep you, Rose. You must have a hundred things to do. Of course, miss. Good night. You smell bad. Nicky. Stop pestering him. Why must everything be so bright? It is called, day, for a reason. Charcoal and oil will soak up everything in your gut eat if i am in fact to marry i would like the both of you to be present if he seems to believe there is a way out of this we would be honored to attend good have you told the duke about your exhibition series business alice will is seeking more investors for a series of matches. Perhaps, your grace, you and your future brother-in-law, might be interested in investing. The Viscount certainly owes you something. After shooting at you. Alice. What? I am sure his grace understands the basic tenets of marriage. Or at least he will. Everything you know, I know and everything I know. Well, you eventually catch up. Pay her no mind. That's what I do. Ah. Right, dears, come on. Out you go. As low as you can go, Lady Danbury. With these knees, yes, your majesty. Very well. Let your young people come forward. I have heard a rumor that the special license you seek to marry has been denied. I am not quite sure what you believe I am to do about it. Well, plead your case. Your Majesty, I assure you, nothing untoward has occurred. It is only that we love each other so very much. While I was deeply flattered by the attention of your nephew, the Prince, I I simply could not ignore my long-standing affection for the Duke. You see, your majesty, it was love at first sight. It was not, your majesty. The young lady flatters me. But it was not love at first sight. For either of us, there was attraction. Certainly, at least on my part. But Miss Bridgerton thought me presumptuous arrogant, insincere, all fair, really. And I thought her a prim young lady, barely out of leading strings. Not to mention, the sister of my best friend. And so romance was entirely out of the question for both of us. But in so removing it, we found something far greater. We found friendship. You see, Miss Bridgerton and I have been fooling all of Mayfair for some time. We have fooled them into thinking we are courting. When really, all along, we simply enjoyed each other's company so much. We could not stay away from one another. I have never been a man that much enjoyed flirting or chatting or, indeed, talking at all. But with Daphne, Miss Bridgerton, conversation has always been easy. 
Her laughter brings me joy. To meet a beautiful woman is one thing. But to meet your best friend, in the most beautiful of women, is something entirely apart. And it is with my sincerest apologies. I must say it took the prince coming along for me to realize I did not want Miss Bridgerton to only be my friend. I wanted her to be my wife. I want her to be my wife. And so I plead with you not to make us wait. Simon, you are wise or perhaps unusually lucky to understand friendship to be the best possible foundation a marriage can have even if that foundation should crumble as quickly as it was built i shall like to offer you the choice miss bridgerton do you wish to marry this man dearly beloved we are gathered to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony it is said that marriage hath in it less of beauty but more of safety than the single life in the name of the father of the son and of the holy ghost amen i now pronounce you man and wife it was such a beautiful wedding thank you for having us your grace i suppose congratulations are in order we being friends after all I do hope you will remember my kindness in keeping secrets and repay me someday. Enjoy your triumph, your grace. What about him? He seems pleasant. Or him. Kind eyes. A fine enough husband, I think. Pen. I neither know nor have time for any of these men. Now, where is Colin? You can choose anyone but him. He is my friend, Marina. I have known him forever. And I do not want him to be tricked and deceived into a lifelong commitment. You must not do this to a good man. Well, should I perhaps entrap a bad man, then? Perhaps you would find it acceptable for me to live my life with a man. Who treats me like a mere beast? No, I only mean. What am I to do, Penelope? I will be a good wife to Colin. And he a good husband and father. However young. And well liked by you he may be. Miss Thompson. You will be delighted to know. That Lord Rutledge is no longer available. He is engaged as of this morning. That is. How terrible. Best hope that whatever you have planned for Mr. Bridgerton actually works. It is your last hope. Oh. I should. As should I. I am beginning to feel a bit faint. Perhaps you know of a more private place where I might catch my breath. Certainly, Miss Thompson. Please. Hem. This is much more comfortable. Thank you. Though it is still quite loud. Oh, of course. We should not be alone in here. No, we should not. Hem. I can hardly believe I am saying this. But we cannot go further. You are a lady. And I must maintain your honor and mine. No matter how, tempting otherwise. Have I offended you? No. You are right. I am a lady. I am unmarried. And you. You are. A gentleman. Then marry me. I know we have only known each other. A short while, but. Well, would you want to marry me? Miss Thompson. I would be delighted to marry you. What are we waiting for? My thoughts exactly. We will marry by the end of the season. It's a rather long engagement. Or simply romantic. You deserve a grand wedding. Our families will need time to plan. It will be wonderful, I promise you. But let us not say anything now. It is my sister's day. Of course.
Your Majesty. I must say, I am honored and most grateful for your presence. And I must say, I hope you made the right choice. Well, either way, I suppose you will enjoy your wedding night, at the very least. Yes, you certainly enjoy spreading secrets, do you not? Dear child, have you lost your wits? Everyone enjoys secrets. Otherwise, why would Lady Whistledown's paper be so successful? I am flattered by your accusation. But it is simply not true. Though, when you unmask the writer, do let me know. You believe Whistledown is Lady Danbury? Your Majesty. What evidence have you gathered? You would like to know. What evidence I have gathered? In my investigation of Lady Whistledown. Are you requiring your queen? To ask again? Oh. Tell me what you know. Well, I believe her a widow. She obviously has the financial means. A most enjoyable party. Indeed. Um, Bridgerton, um. The other night. What happened the other night? I do not believe anything happened at all. Ah. Very well. Ah, dearest. I believe you know Mr. Bridgerton. My wife, Mrs. Lucy Granville. It is a pleasure, Mr. Bridgerton. M.M. I spoke to the Duke. That makes one of us. He refused your dowry. Is this your attempt to raise my spirits? He refused for your benefit, sister. I shall put the money in trust. So you may use it how you see fit. For your children, perhaps. Certainly, you two will have a brood. Large enough to put mothers to shame. What? Is something wrong? I am. This is all. I must take a moment. Excuse me. I know it must be difficult. To be leaving this house. I have many memories here. And you will make new ones. With your husband. Ah, my husband. Seems so strange. To finally be able to say that. I suppose I have put this conversation off. For as long as I can. On my wedding day. I insisted cook bring out. Round after round of food. In part because I did not want. The celebration to end, but. If I must confess. I was also quite apprehensive. Of my wedding night. In fact, I was quite full. By the time we got to Aubrey Hall. I certainly do not recommend that. Well, what do you recommend, Mama? I know you and the Duke. Well, whatever took place. Between the two of you. You may very well. Know some things already. I know nothing. I assure you. Well, there are some things. You ought to know. Some things that will happen. That involve you and your husband. The Duke, obviously. Well, he, you see. The Marital Act. Which, now that you are married. You may perform. If it is this difficult to discuss. How difficult must it be to perform? It is not, dearest. It is most natural. Much in the way. That rain soaks a field in autumn. And in spring, flowers grow. When you were younger, do you remember? We had two hounds in the country. Bassets, in fact. That is right. Well, no one explained it to them. But there were puppies. I see. So. So, this act. It is performed to have children. Yes. But. What if the Duke. And I cannot have children. Does that prevent us. From performing this act at all. From even having a wedding night at all. Dear. Is this your concern? Daphne. 
the two of you care for each other deeply. When all is said and done, nothing else matters. There is no reason to be concerned. I still have so many questions, Mama. They are bringing the carriages around. It is time. Perhaps I can come with you. I've always wanted to live in a castle. If Daphne is going to take anyone with her, Gregory, it will be me. The two of you are staying here. Until our dear sister allows us a visit. You mean if she allows us a visit? I'm sure you'll enjoy the peace and quiet. I am going to miss all of you terribly. Even me. Even you. I have a present for you. It is upstairs, made of four walls. And a very comfortable bed. I suppose. The light in your room is quite pleasant. I know we could not be any more different. But there is one thing we do share. The certainty that you will make. Your own way in this world. I am sure of it, Eloise. Write to me as soon as you arrive. Of course, Mama. You are going to be a wonderful duchess. We should reach the inn before nightfall. The inn. Cliveden is much too far a journey. And the roads are not safe after dusk. We need to rest. Before continuing on in the morning. So we will be spending. Our wedding night at the inn. Why? I should have told you. Not at all. I do hope everything is to your liking. Should you require anything else at all? Please let me know. Ah, here we are. Your room, your grace, is just over here. I requested a separate room. Yes. Should I? Yes. Yes. We should go down to dinner. Daphne. I. Are you not hungry? The food is excellent here, I assure you. The last time I visited. I do not want any dinner. I have spent the last three days. Wanting to be alone with you. Wanting to talk to you. Wanting to know. I understand. That you do not wish to see me. That you would prefer to stay. In your separate room. And endure a wordless dinner together. On our wedding night. But I. That is not what I would prefer. Simon. You are mistaken. You have avoided my presence. In order to allow you your liberty. You have said all but a few words to me. In order to keep myself. From saying the wrong things. You've barely been able. To look me in the eye. I could not bear witness. To the misery I have caused you. You did not. I am the one. Who trapped you into this marriage. I trapped you. I have spent the last three days in agony. Unable to talk to you. Unable to be alone with you. Because I knew. You wanted nothing to do with me. And understandably so, after forcing you. To make an unimaginable sacrifice. You wanted a life with children, a family. You wanted a life. With a man you truly knew. You wanted a love match, and yet. And yet. This could not be any more different. Is that what you hope to say? I shall join you for dinner momentarily. Everything I told the Queen was true. I cannot stop thinking of you. From the mornings you ease. To the evenings you quiet. To the dreams you inhabit. My thoughts of you never end. I am yours, Daphne. I have always been yours. I. I do not understand. I do not know how to be any more clear. Do not get angry. I am not angry. I. You look angry and bothered. Look at you. You are downright flushed. Yes, that is what happens. When one is angry. When one burns for someone. Who does not feel the same? You. Burn for me. Why do you think? 
I followed you into that garden. Why do you think I went into that garden? If you would have only looked at me this week for longer than two seconds, you would have seen it is you I cannot sacrifice. I burn for you. What are you? Simon, do you want me to stop? No, do you want me to stop? I want to show you more. More. Did you touch yourself? Like we talked about. Show me. I. I cannot. Tell me what you thought about. When you were alone. I thought about. Simon, I need you closer. This may hurt a moment. I thought about you. When I touch myself. I always think about you. How do you feel? I feel. I feel. Wonderful.